started barbecuing back in the early 70s and the church uh, really got mildly famous for barbecuing and um, it, it became a part of who the church is. Father, we thank you for today. We ask that you bless us to be a blessing. Bless this, the barbecue on today. Bless us to serve the community to the best of our ability. And we thank you for each and every one within the community. Bless us, Lord God, to do our very best on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pieces look pretty proud. See, what they did now, they, 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 I know about the barbecue. I know about that because they paid this church all selling barbecue out there. I want some of the bark off this hickory. We renovated this kitchen with commercial uh, equipment so we can sell barbecue ribs and chicken. I don't know too many people that don't like barbecue. It tastes good, it smells good. Most time I get a, a, a rack of ribs, take them home. Special occasion I'll get a, uh, I'll get two racks and I'll go home, put one on my grill and I tell my neighbors, I said, I cook the best barbecue in town. <laughs> My dad, he makes a pretty good sauce too. You know the king sauce? My aunt makes that and there's a, there's an actual king sauce that makes it. So they, I like the actual king sauce. Not her sauce, I like that better. And then the sunny sweet sauce, if you mix the king sauce and the sunny sweet sauce and you shake it up in a bottle, that's one good sauce. <laughs> I assist uh, Reverend Scotty Clark a lot in um, bringing out his foods when he get ready to cook them. And I just, I'm an all-around person. Whatever they ask me to do, I do it. And I just love my job. You know, I work like on Fridays and Saturdays. And there's no better uh, job you can have to work two days a week and have five days off. <laughs> we have ribs, chicken. We have Boston butts. We, we chop those up for pork sandwiches. We have all of the available sides, baked beans, coleslaw, potato salad, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, and cornbread. We also carry sweet tea and sweet potato pie. Everybody likes my collard greens. Miss Betty's collard greens. I don't usually share my recipe. I was just driving by and uh, like I said, I, I drove by a couple times and uh, the smoke finally got me. Uh, so many churches try to draw people to them in their own way with many things. We chose to do it through barbecue, something that we built the church with. This is the church that barbecue built. At first, I really didn't care for the barbecue business. I thought it was a waste of time because I felt it was taking my dad's time because he used to work here like four days a week. And I used, you know, just didn't see them that much. So it kind of upset me at first. I was like, why are they doing this? I mean, what's the point of this barbecue business? I mean, but then it started booming and booming and booming. I had an opportunity to say, hey, I don't mind cooking. And then people saw it a little different. They saw it like, wow, you know, our pastor, he doesn't mind serving. And this will help the church. It'll help all of us. Well, uh, for one thing, it helps, you know, um, pay the bills. I know it can do that. You know, I can come and I can put two or three dollars on the table every Sunday, but that's not gonna pay the light bill. Uh, my pastor Clark is a beautiful, beautiful person. And Sister Wilkerson, as uh, long as I've known her when she came, she's a beautiful person. And like I say, we just, we built this church over here 
selling barbecue on the little tree out there on the, in the corner. This is Lil Bertha. And uh, she's seasoned. She has over 10 years worth of seasoning. And uh, all barbecue cooks know that the seasoning of the grill is important. That's where that smoky barbecue, if you just smell in here, you don't smell anything but barbecue. <laughs> She's primarily used for just smoking and adding that good smoke flavor to the meat. And I use nothing but oak, pure oak and hickory in her. And of course, uh, blackjack, when I can get a hold to it. Blackjack is a type of an oak. It's got a stronger smoke scent. All barbecue men, they know what blackjack oak is. God works in mysterious ways. God will use people to bring forth his um, agenda, his ideas, the things that he wants to do to bring us in line with his will. Little New Hope is here, you know, Tasty Barbecue is here. And we, you know, we're here to give out good barbecue and good spiritual thought as well. Food for your body and food for your spirit. Actually, on a piece of property across the road, um, it was in the late 50s, 59, 60. The giver of the property was a lady, a wonderful lady by the name of Mrs. Uh, May Borders. She uh, gave the property to the church for them to build the church on, but when they walked it off, they walked it off on the wrong property. And so what happened then, it began a long legal battle. So. The man gave I gave them a hard time about the property. Okay. About being, and one day, one morning, uh, one Sunday morning, I came to church and I, I didn't come to Sunday school. I got a little late, came in a little later, and they said you just miss it. Say, say you know, the, the man had the church locked up and we couldn't get in. <laughs> say we had to call the sheriff department to get into the church. We didn't have this land here. Well, we said that now in the church yet. We didn't. And the lady told us. The pastor and we went out there to see it. This land wasn't for sale, and she wasn't going to sell it to nobody. She that ain't from the church. And here's what Reverend McKenzie told me, I never would tell you. He said, if, will you promise me, if you sell this man, will you let us be the first one out of first offer? And she said, yes, but, but I ain't going to sell it. So and then he come back and he, he told the church about it. He said, well, y'all pray with us. So that man over there said, the Lord is going to give us that land. So we've got to be on one accord. Said we got to pray about it. He said he would give us that land. So that land, he said, I can feel it in my spirit. So it's good. He was kind of like a leader like Joshua was along then. Yes. And we were sort of like that. That We were sort of like the Israelite was. We wanted this land. We were serious about it, too. They they started the barbecue um, up to, actually, to my parents' house. And uh, they started doing well with it, and it quickly grew. It grew uh, a lot faster than what they uh, could imagine. When we first started this barbecue, we started up there at Carl Clark's and Maddie P. Clark's home when we first started this, the, the barbecue. Under the Reverend James A. McKenzie, deceased, he asked us to start a fundraiser so we could build a new church. It was a we, it was a need for a new church, and we had to buy some property. But we, he come back and told us, he said, guess what, so I got good news. Say, she called us and she told us she was going to let the church have the land. And not only was she going to let this church have this land, 
She said, but if we pay it off, she was gonna knock a thousand dollars off for it. She did. They built uh, probably one of the best barbecue pits I've ever seen. They, and these men were uh, very talented. Uh, they didn't have a lot of education, but they had a lot of what they call mother wit or common sense and know how on how to do things. They built a pit right over there, like the type of pits that just a brick pit with um, the fireproof bricks. I mean, they built it right and um, they started cooking over there and people was coming from Sanford, they was coming from Orlando, they was coming from B-Land. And we, they paid for the church with barbecue. Generation, uh, people that we looked up to, I looked up to, I revered. Uh, my dad, he was the main cook at that time, and uh, he taught me how to barbecue at 15. The first set, I used to go there because I was in contracting then. So that, I would just come around and buy barbecue from the church to help support it because I knew that they was trying to build a church. So after uh, um, that was uh, finished, when they got the church up, because see, they was across the road, they wasn't in the new building. I would have, you know, raise money. You know, my kids were there, and they would have like um, uh, baby put on babies. Um, uh, uh, you know, when you put the baby thing on, what you call it? Uh, baby shower. No, not shower. You know, the prettiest kid, whoever raised the most money and all of that. With a pageant. Yeah, like, okay, well, my, kid, my, my baby would always win, so I would raise the most money for that. I would help them raise money to, to, to you know, to help, uh, what they go, uh, you know, put it towards the church. And then after they, um, uh, the little church there was uh, across the road, and when they left from there, then they came over on the other side of the road. So, um... When they came over on the other side of the road, I would go there only for funerals at that particular time. They had a vision about selling barbecue to help pay for the church. Mm. And during that time, I had, uh, of course, small children, and they would help carry the wood. They would help shuck corn or whatever we had to do, uh, pick greens. We would have uh, pick the greens so if they serve meals. And then whenever, um, you know, I was help out with the, in the kitchen with the serving of the cleaning up chicken to put it on the barbecue grill and mm. just enjoyed ourselves. And um, and um, I lost my husband during that time and um, I remarried and so I have, my husband is a deacon in the church, not Deacon Robert Wilkinson. And uh, I thank God for him. Right. And I thank God for uh, Pastor Clark. Amen. Um, he was young when he got started and he, <laughs> and, but he said that he's, he's grown so much in uh, spirit and in truth. Right. And I thank God for him being here. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to get down to business. Yeah. Amen. To the word of God, we've gone through protocol, would have called, and should have called. Amen. Amen. So, those of you who have your Bibles, if you don't mind, hold them up and repeat after me. Yeah. So this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am. I am. What it says. Sometimes you can be in church and you can see things sometimes that don't be going right and sometimes it's going wrong. You know, it's, it's just, that's the devil. That's who he is. That's who he is trying to get me out of him. But I, I told the devil, get out of my way, I'm going to stay right here. And I've been here ever since through, like I said, through Reverend McKenzie, through Reverend Washner, and now I'm in the hand of Reverend Clark. He's, he's a good minister. I know him when he was like this. When he was six years of age, I knew it was something special about Scotty, but I didn't know what it was. He, he was in the back seat of my car, and he was singing Amazing Grace. Uh, he's not the type of a pastor and try to take a lot from the church. He don't do that because if he see that the church is going slack, then he'll say, don't 
you know, don't give me anything. That's one thing I like about him. He don't try to take from the church. He'd rather give the church than to take from the church. So if we doesn't have enough money to pay him, then he'll hold back, say, he take care of the bills and take care of our, the keyboard player. And then if, it, you know, if we have anything left, then he'll take it because I'm telling you, he's just a, a good pastor. Amen. Every once in a while, our credit won't get it. Our money is money. Our change is strength. I wish I had somebody here. three-day fast, three days and three nights, and he stayed in his bedroom. He wasn't married to anybody. And he was living up, living with me and Carl Clark, my husband. And when Scotty came out of the bedroom off that fast, his face was glowing. And I said, God, Scotty, what happened? He said, I've been called a preach. I heard a voice say, Scotty. And I looked around, I was, you know, Searching and and and, and um, again, I heard the voice about five minutes later say, "Scotty, just." And I looked around. There was no one in the house but me. I'm 18 years of age, so I can't be developing Alzheimer's. I'm losing my mind, and so. And then the voice spoke very audibly again. I mean, just, Scotty, go and preach my gospel. The Bible says, "Be sure of your calling." You have to be sure. When you're going to speak for God or say, this is what God told me, you really need to be sure. I didn't uh, go preach because I wanted to go preach or because I felt like it would be um, something, a great career. You know, and there's a lot of preachers that do that, sadly. And um, it's hard for them to help people. But I, I was called to preach. <laughs> church I mean kind of like the coolest thing is watching them sometimes I mean when they like get it down they dance and they shout on it's kind of you know sometimes it's a little funny because they just you know sometimes you know it gets it can get really intense in a Baptist church I mean people take their wigs off and they just twirl them around and throw them I mean people just really worship in the Lord and it's just a great experience for anyone that's you know that's not that's not even a Christian you don't even have to be a Christian to come to church I mean you just come and just watch is a big role of love. Because we have learned to love our neighbor. There is no particular race to love and to care about. Because I feel that the good Lord brought everyone on this earth to be equal. And remember, faith has to be coupled with works. Faith without works is dead. It's two wings on the same bird. Uh, no bird, Kev, it's an eagle. You know, you never see a bird in the air with just one wing, just 
floating around up there with one wing working. You always see a bird with two wings. Faith and no works won't fly. Works and no faith won't fly. A bird needs two wings to fly. He needs faith and works. Well, faith works here in a different way. It, it didn't, we didn't just decide to go out there and start doing a barbecue. It took a process. We had to get everything. We had to have faith in God that everything would have been okay. And so far, everything's been okay. Every morning when my dad gets up, I'm pretty sure he, every morning he gets up, he prays. He gets down on his knees and he prays. He, I'm pretty sure he prays about the barbecue and I'm pretty sure he prays about us as a family. This, it is, this barbecue just like, it wouldn't be able to happen without God in it. God has did a lot for this church. On my way to heaven, faith turn opposition into opportunity. Can I get a witness? Faith turn problems into possibility. Am I right about it? By me trusting God, no, and having the faith of something that I couldn't see. It's hard to have faith in something you can't see, and you don't know your way, and you don't know what's going to happen. And I have things to get in my way. Say, well, if you get sick, what you gonna do? I heard this little boy say, "I got your back." I'm calling you to say. You know, it's belief in, in God. Hope um, is where you just have a desire or trust to see something good happen. I like uh, the quote Dickinson, Emily Dickinson, she writes, hope is a thing that has wings and perches itself in the soul. If you have uh, faith in something, say you need help paying your light bill, Satan will come up and tell you, you can't pay that big bill. Go to such and such and borrow it is. But you see, he tells us to get on our knees and pray and ask God. He said, always be, be the lender and not the borrower. Faith is power. I know that. I can tell you that. I tell anybody in the world. Faith is powerful. I tell you another thing is powerful. Prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is the key to the kingdom. I mean, faith, you can't see faith. Faith, you can't see faith. You just have to walk and try to find it. I mean, you have to try to get to faith. I mean, you just have to have faith. I mean, like, like you just, faith is just a, it's a great word. I mean, it's one of the fruits of the spirit. I think it's the third fruit of the spirit. But I mean, you know, everyone in the church has to have faith. They have to, you know, walk the Christian walk. I mean, I didn't have faith at first. You know, I felt like I couldn't be a Christian. I mean, you know, why do I have to, you know, I don't, I want tattoos, you know, I want piercings, you know. And in the Bible, they say your body's a temple and I don't want to hear that. You know, I just want to get a couple of piercings and a couple of tattoos. And, and I had to have faith that I could do, I could not get tattoos, that I could be a better person, that I could love people and I could never, I couldn't talk about people so much. So I had faith and I, and then, Faith, I mean, faith, it came true, you know, after the fact of the matter when I got done with all that. And I'm, I'm a better person now, you know, I'm not the best. I mean, no one's perfect, but Jesus Christ. But I mean, I try to have faith that, that I could be a better person, that I could be quiet and not talk so much to other people, you know, and bicker at people. But I just, I just try my best, you know, and I have faith that, um, that this church is gonna, just gonna come up and it's just gonna be, they're gonna have a thousand members. I just. Have faith. I mean, I mean, faith is something you really have to have in your mind. I mean, you can't just just build faith in one day. You have to, you have.
you have to take up time and just think about faith. Because, I mean, when you lose faith, you could maybe lose the goal that you're going for. Like, if you have faith that you can swim, then you stop. Your faith gets low. You could die. I mean, you got you to gotta keep the faith. You have to keep going and keep striving and keep moving. You can't just stop when you feel like, you know, my faith is dead. I mean, the Lord is not doing anything. But you got to have faith. You got to keep pressing on. When the Lord says that your faith is 100% strong, he will come in and rescue you. I got faith that the people is coming into this. I think we're going to have a pretty good day today. Oh, so, you know, just like we say, we have a pretty good day today selling barbecue. So that's what we do. And then um, we'll have some, we just might have a, a guy that might come in and, you know, he want to uh, spend a little time with him. We sit out there and we talk about the Lord and all of that. You have another preacher that comes in. comes in a lot, but I don't know if he's sick now or not. But anyway, we come in and we sit out and we talk about the Lord. And we get to talking about the Lord. Look like for some reason or another, people just get to, to coming into the barbecue stand. I say, oh, Lord, I say, ain't this going to be a wonderful day? I say, this is a good day today, see it. And then we sit back down that time. We say all that little bar, that, that get them customers there the way y'all say let's get back on we get to talking about the lord again for some reason we got faith another that the lord is gonna bless us today because we are just a very small church and we deal a lot with the community and we try to give them faith and hope and hope i have much hope for new hope i hope new hope is going to grow it's going to grow and grow. We are in the process now of restoring our church inside and out. So we're going to get, we plan on getting new pews, new furniture. We in the towel, our floors, we already started in the kitchen. So we, we got much hope and much, much faith. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> And barbecue, I just love barbecue. <laughs> the second phase of the barbecue uh, began, which is barbecue now. We agreed that we wanted to renovate the church, a complete renovation. And uh, at the time, um, the banks wanted too much money and too much collateral to just get a loan. We wanted to just get a, a construction loan or a equity loan and just renovate it that way. And so what happened was we met, uh, each member kicked around, we started to sell candy or, or uh, do pins and, you know, and one member said, I, and I'm kind of ashamed but I didn't think of it, why don't we do what we know how to do? Why don't we do what we know will work? And that's barbecuing. It's paying off, it's paying off. It's really, uh, we got our kitchen done. A whole everything remodeled and everything in there renovated. The next project is we're looking to do our bathrooms, to renovate the bathrooms and the foyer to come into the church. And the biggest project is going to be the sanctuary. I had a vision, and in the vision, God had a purpose. And God have a plan for my life. And God have a purpose and a plan for everybody's life. Well, my life is going, I want to be a lawyer. First, I want to go to Stetson College. That's in Daytona. For a couple, for four years, I want a full scholarship there. I plan on having a GPA of 3.83. I want to be a lawyer. And um, I'm going to do pre-law. And... I'm going to be going to college for eight years. After those four years of Stetson, I want to go to Yale University. And then I want to finish those years up. And then I want to get a job in a firm in California. And then I was going to start my business there and I'm going to go to church. And then I was going to, after I finish that, I get a job a year or two. Then I'll come back to visit, you know, I'll come back back and forth to visit my dad and stuff, see how the church is going. And then I'll have enough money. I'll have over like $2 million. And I'll probably, I mean, if the church is not rebuilt by then, I'll just start from scratch and I'll just rebuild the entire church. And some of that property out there, I want to make that the church. Just all that property back there, just make it a big congregation. Just a huge church. I mean, with it could be like, you know, stained glass windows, with Jesus Christ on this window, Jesus on this window, and then, and then him on his knees on these two windows. 
And then I want, you know, brown. I want to change the church's color to like brown, like kind of like the wall, kind of tile brown. And then I want the carpet instead of red. I wanted a different color, kind of like a bluish kind of color, like marble. Like marble would be pretty. And then instead of these, like, like you know the churches and the brochures, like the little nice churches and the brochures, kind of like that. I want this instead of red. Like it could be like a blue, and then this could be white with Jesus, like the cross like that, like how we have the crosses, but longer and thicker crosses like that, and then crosses like that. And then like we would have different type of ceiling fans. We would have like like the stained glass windows would be like that. And then like I would fix the wall and I would have like instead of the cross up there, how they have a little cross, I would have like a bigger cross and it'd be like designed better. I would have a famous designer actually built a church from scratch. like. A designer would come and take hours and hours. It would take like four months to build a church, but I mean, you could rent a building until the church is done. I mean, that wouldn't really be a big problem. It'd be like probably like eight hundred dollars. Jesus on the main line, I joined New Hope when I was sixteen years old. I've been here as of this year, forty-eight years. Well, since I've been here, we've had six pastors. Five of them are deceased. Pastor Clark is our sixth one. And my mother brought us to church over here, and I was a junior usher starting off with. And I became a member. Our choir kind of got a little scared, so we, I, at first I was scared to sing, but I was nervous. But then I said, Lord, if you go with me, if you able me that I sing for you. So ever since then, I don't mind singing. I will sing and <laughs> all the time sing. was a very good singer. He really was. So I guess I must have picked up my little bit. Man, my mom couldn't sing. She could sing a little bit, but not that much. You see, and then plus I, I sang uh, the blues <laughs> for a while. Help out with the blues, our background with the blues. So and that's where uh, the spiritual singing come from, from the blues. You know that I Day, so people uh, enjoy smoked turkeys and I enjoy smoking them. They enjoy eating them and I enjoy smoking them. Smoking turkeys is almost close to smoking chickens. But uh, I know uh, turkeys are a little bit bigger than a chicken is. Or we get this far. We are 
got some new uh, lighting and windows will be coming in pretty soon. So we're working very hard. The barbecue is really paying off. We're just enjoying uh, the transition of getting it done, of actually seeing it get done. Oh, yeah, we're trying to get the church all fixed up in there and the carpet and new, uh, I mean, new chairs and fixed up the um, choir stand, the pool pit. Got to make all that stuff. Well, make it look real good because uh, it's overdue. And if y'all looking at me, you can see how exhausted I am looking at an old lady. I don't want them to think that I'm made out of scrap iron. I'm an old lady, 67 years old, and I'm getting old. I'm not getting old, but I'm old. And there was so much I can do. I once was lost. I once was lost. But now I'm found. But now. You know, us kids, we don't like just hearing them boring Christian songs like, and you want, like how they be doing like with the little, you know, they, they have the hymns, the old hymns. And we're younger kids, we like a little more spad, we like a little more hip. You know, that's why I like It's a God in Me. I mean, my dad even likes that song. I mean, it's a great song. It's Christian, it's, it's up and beat. You can dance to it, you can move to it. I mean, it's really good. <laughs> Scotty is really excellent cook. He does all the cooking at home. <laughs> so he, he just really knows how to put it all together and different seasonings and, and get it together. The meat that's cooked on, day, on today was marinated on Tuesday. So, you know, most guys are gonna cook, they ready just to throw the meat on the grill that day. So uh, they can get meat that's full of flavor that's been marinated for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. For over three days, this is the fourth day, adds a lot of flavor, more flavor to the meat. Barbecue, is barbecue the best thing he does with barbecue? Um, I personally like the ribs the best. The ribs are delicious, I mean, he's seasoned them. He makes up his own secret recipe to seasoning the ribs. I mean, he has his secret recipe, he won't tell anybody his recipe. He mixes it up together by himself. He has it in like a big old bowl and he shakes it and shakes it up and puts it in the little bolt boxes and stuff. He just, I mean, it's some excellent ribs. I mean, they're so tender and moist and they're just, you just have to savor the moment of eating those ribs. I mean, and then the barbecue sauce, you know, the homemade barbecue sauce mixed with a little tangy barbecue sauce. It's just, just like a minute in heaven. Uh, Reverend Clark has a different, different type of preparations that he likes. And also, Sister Blunt has her own preparation blunt that she likes. Uh, so Sister Blunt has been cooking for a, and what I'm saying, it's been a long time. And she has her own style. And also, she helped Reverend Clark a little bit to get his, his started. And then Reverend Clark started developing his own style. I learned everything my father had taught me. You know, and he taught me a lot of valuable uh, points and uh, a lot of valuable things about cooking. And so what I did is um, after I learned all that, you know, I wanted to put more flavor in the meat, you know. So I found out that if um, you uh, marinated it and there was different marinades, so now you got to choose which, which is the best. You don't want to add a lot of heat to it, but just enough to get it, get it crumped. But after eight hours cooking time, I wrap them for the last four hours. Yeah. So they call it, when you wrap them for four, they call that the Texas crunch. Yeah. I throw the Texas crunch on them hey. for the last four. And man, you can pull them apart. Yeah, yeah. You can pull them apart. That's a nice, beautiful half of chicken. Got a good marinade on them, ready for cooking. Uh, I, I like um, ribs. Yeah. I like chicken. <laughs> chicken? No, mm -hmm. I like ribs. I'm, I'm a ribs girl, and I guess she's a, a chicken girl. <laughs> We're just gonna get a nice little face on this meat. 
these people right here, they, they, I'm gay. Well, these people right here, they cook the best barbecue that I, that I eat in a long time. And, uh, I really enjoy my, I, the lady in there, I call her Granny. And then their brother, Wilton. And I just called, pa I just called the pastor, brother Johnson. He probably won't speak to me no more, but other than that, you know, I really enjoy life, and I believe in the Lord, and I, I think the Lord is one of the most beautiful persons in the world. You might not see him, but in your heart and in your soul, you can feel him, you know what I mean? You know, you know, it's like you see you come there very few there at church. And a lot of them, if they don't have money, they won't come to church. Then sometimes we have to give some of the members money in order to get to church because uh, they are unfortunate, you know. So, uh, you know, everybody, you know, didn't come with that silver spoon in their mouth. Praise him with the I'm not, uh, I'm not a, a guy that does a lot of talking. I don't talk very much. But, uh, you know, a lot of people get you out of you have just run a mouth all the time, but not me. I can sit there, I can sit up there, I can do that as a preacher. See, they pre when he was preaching today, he, the spirit got into me. And then when that man, uh, when the piano player went to singing that song, hey, that that would that would throw the, all the wood on the fire, made a good heat. <laughs> I, I I had to get up then and, and do my little thing, you know, because let me tell you, the spirit don't work on everybody the same. It don't it don't work that way. It's a lot of people get up and. Shout and jump around. I get mine easy. told me to go preach. Now, I cannot read and write like you. I'm not a good reader. I'm not a good writer. But I can get up, I can preach the word. Because why? Because God give me what he want me to say. God, you ain't able to let me wear some of your clothes. Yeah. I was drinking whiskey all of my life. I've drunk whiskey about all of my life. He took me off of the dance floor. He took me off of the whiskey bottle. He took me off of running women. He took me off 
the gambling flow, all that kind of stuff. God did that. I did not do that. Oh, I could have been dead and gone. Yeah. But you took me in jail for a little while. Yeah. I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Lord, I want to thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. For this offer. Yeah. Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for the one to give. Yeah. And the one had not to give. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just want to say thank you right now. Barbecue is the works part of the faith, meaning we get out here and we work to, to help make it happen. Uh, we can't control the result of it because the result part is in God's hand, but the work part is in our hands, you know, where we get our, actually have to get our hands dirty and go out and do something that's gonna help. And there's so many people that we come into contact with that we have a chance to just be that little light in their life. That guy or woman that come up, they just, they're tired from a long day's work. And God bless you, brother, sister. Nice to see you today. You know, we love you. You know, enjoy your meal. You know, thank you for supporting the trek. <laughs> But this heat sure makes you not want to die and go to hell. <laughs> okay. So you want a rib sandwich? Or you want the thin part? Why do you like the thin part so much? I don't know. I just want a big thin This is my uh, propane cooker that I use with wood chips. I call her Big Mama uh, because she's a little bigger than my other cookers. Uh, she cooks really well. She's temperamental. Uh, very few people can use her but me because uh, I work with her day in and day out. It's about like a lion or something at the zoo. You have to uh, get used to uh, that creature. So uh, this is a, a great cooker. Uh, it's a slow cooker. I use it to put uh, humidity in my meat uh, to get it real good and tender. I love to cook the way the old people used to cook like cook country style. All of the old people that used to cook these sweet potato pies, they are passed away and gone. So they left the tradition, their recipe with me. I asked them, because I said, this is too much just to go down the drain. And before you leave, I will give you one of my sweet potato pies, my little small pies, and let you tell me what you think. It's not good to brag on yourself, but it's good to see what somebody else has to say about it. Picking your wood is like picking your wife. It has to be just right or it'll cause you a lot of problems. So you want to look at your fire and uh, choose your wood wisely. The pieces of wood uh, that I'm using, I got a, a good solid piece here that's going to add some heat for a while. And you need good heat, heat consistency to cook well. But you also need a, a little fire starter here, something that's gonna uh, throw some heat in there right away. So it is a balance. It's just like life. There's a balance to life and there's a balance to barbecue. The barbecue business comes in handy. I mean, people come to the barbecue business on Sundays. Sometimes we have to tell them that, you know, we're having church. This is the Lord's day. But people, the people love the barbecue business and it actually bought us a lot of members. It bought us some members to the church. The barbecue business is not just for the barbecue business, just for us, our beneficial. It's for the church, it's for people all around us, the congregation, I mean, I mean, you came to the barbecue business and look where we are now, we're recording, I mean. You want people to be safe and to have a good eating experience, so gloves is just the right thing to do. And hey, you know, we're the church. You know, if you can't have a, Good clean meal at the church. Where can you have a good clean meal? You gotta tell me which one of the sauces you like. This one. And that's king mustard. I don't know which one. This one's sunny sweet. Okay. Everybody was talking about how good, how good it was tasting. Yeah. Well, that's all that matters. When people can enjoy a good meal, that's what I cook for. I don't cook for money. Mm -hmm. I don't cook for fame or fortune, but I cook for the, the, the people to be happy, to say, you know what, yeah. that was good. 
we feed a lot of people during this barbecue. And a lot of people bless us, we bless them. And we like a little family, a little happy family. If people have, if they have money, we, we glad they have money. If they don't have money, we still feed them. We still. The grills, you know, they become an extension of you. You know, because the barbecue is you. And it, it's representative of who you are. If it's good barbecue, then you, you're a good cook. If it's bad barbecue, you're a bad cook. So Big Mama and Little Bertha, they represent me quite well. We usually get two full pork sandwiches, a tea, and a, he gets half a pound. <laughs> no sauce. Because he's part of the family and he's just like the rest of it. <laughs> can't beat the people. He's really nice, people. I'm going to get ready to put some uh, chicken on in a few minutes. Right, right behind these ribs. I always like to put the ribs on because they take up more space. So you always want to put your bigger uh, meat on first, your rib, your Boston butts, your brisket, and then the smaller pieces, you can work them around it because they're more flexible. So you can do more with it. That's a uh, barbecue secret. I don't tell anyone. I'll try that. I'll try to get a few tidbits, but he'll be like, next thing I know is that you'll have your Uncle Pete and you'll have a, your own sweet pig open up down the street. New Hope is like a, like a, a home away from home for me. Every time I uh, out this way, I would always come in to uh, see my, my pastor, my, whoever is cooking, or uh, even if I can uh, get a bone or two before I can uh, go back to uh, Leesburg. But uh, I enjoy it um, uh, out here, and like I said, nothing's changed. It, it's like uh, you, uh, every time I come back out here to Sorrento, it's almost like time done just stop for like a minute. Yeah, make them up. I just sit here and say, I can start saying, I, I get the praise to myself, you know, and I get to thinking and say, well, 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 my, my, my Lord, you have been so good to me, Lord, 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 you've been been so good to me, Lord, I fell down on my knees, and I pray, I pray to you, oh Lord, 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 please help me. We're just going to shut these doors and let Big Mama do her thing and cook it up nice and tender and juicy for the customers, so we'll keep praying because that's what we do. We pray and we cook. We cook and we pray. That adds more flavor to the food. God bless you. I got faith. That's going to be good. God already done told me he's gonna be good. Oh, whew. That smoke, that's what you want is that good smoke in the barbecue. I mean, everyone's practically the pastor's daughter. I mean, everyone has to learn the Bible. Everyone has to walk the Christian walk. I mean, everyone's a pastor's daughter if you ask me. I feel like it's just an open wide thing. It's to everyone. But see me, I come all four Sundays, and if they got five, I'll take all five. You just can't go to that hive and, and, and hit one bee. And then you say, I, I just had a problem with him. You know what the bees gonna tell you? Uh -uh. We used to gather, baby. That's right. I am a country person. I live out in the country. I cook country. I dress country. I look country. Praise the Lord. Now here is uh, ready to come off. It's ready for uh, eating consumption, for your enjoyment, to uh, 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 tantalize your taste buds, so to speak, to, you know, just uh, say your prayer and uh, add your favorite barbecue sauce and uh, uh, go to town. Tell somebody and tell them it ain't in me.
I visit other churches. I love to go to other churches, but for some reason or another, it's not like New Hope. I'll put it to you like this. When you walk into New Hope, you get this feeling. It's a feeling that you can't describe. You know, you just feel so good when you're just walking in the church, you know, like you, like you belong there. Anyway, anyway, you left me on. Say, I'll be. I'll 